Hello YouTube, you're with Gusto. So today I am getting my first jab of the AstraZeneca vaccine. So thankfully in Australia, people with ME-CFS have been included in the second phase of our national vaccine rollout. We pretty much only have the AstraZeneca vaccine. So come with me, I'm gonna record getting the jab and then my reaction to it afterwards. Hopefully I don't have a reaction, but I understand out of all of the vaccines, AstraZeneca has the most acute reaction uh, compared to the others. But I'm going to do a deep dive on those based on the information from Court Johnson's Health Rising blog, where he's taken a survey of uh, quite a good number of ME-CFS patients and actually uh, people who don't have ME-CFS. So there's people with unrelated conditions who follow his blog, but they've all recorded what their reactions have been uh, to having the jab. And it, it seems to vary quite differently. I'll go through those in detail after I get my vaccination. So let's go. We don't get any lollipops. No, I can give you a sticker. <laughs> a sticker? I'll take a sticker. Mm -hmm. Pop your arm down. Thank you. I'm supposed to, am I supposed to move my arm around no, no. after the... No, no, keep it nice and still. Oh, really? I, I read um, well, it's better to move off. it. Oh, I'm breaking it. <laughs> I'm destroying the vaccine. Sorry. Yeah, it just says to press. To press, okay. Yeah. That's just totally going to fall off. Is it? Tape you up. Like a yeah. Catch me up. Catch up the giant hole in my arm. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. All right. Wow. That was quick. Yeah. Well done. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right. So I've just been Zeneca. Now I'm in the waiting room for 15 minutes to, I guess, see if I have any immediate reaction. I'm looking forward to Okay. So I've been vaccinated. And look, here's proof that I'm a very brave boy. All right, so uh, they've given me a fact sheet about uh, what I can expect after the COVID-19 vaccination. Common side effects, you know, pain, swelling, tenderness at the injection site, tiredness, headache, muscle pain, joint pain, nausea, chills, fever, feeling unwell, less common symptoms, even more rare symptoms, uh, and advice to seek medical attention if, you know, um, something feels like it's going horribly wrong. So for the next couple of days, I'm going to keep you updated on what uh, reactions I have, whether I have any of those. Hopefully I'm mild, but I won't be surprised if I do experience some moderate or severe symptoms. Keep in mind, this is only a sample size of one. It's much more important to look at the broad numbers when it comes to stuff like vaccines. And that's why Court Johnson's uh, Health Rising blog that has taken a really good sample size of uh, patients to see what their reactions are is a much better source because that's how statistics work. <laughs> so um, let's dive into those and see what we can find out. Oh, and one quick point. Um, I'm dying of heat in this car, so I'm trying to make this quick. But I will disagree with the nurse about moving your arm after the vaccine. I did check this on Google. Feel free to Google it yourself, but um, doctors actually do recommend now that you should uh, move your arm and use it normally following a vaccine because that way uh, the vaccine doesn't sit in one spot. That's more likely to cause soreness. So uh, if you actually move it around, the blood will flow around and the vaccine will spread uh, more throughout your body, which is, um, you know, what you want uh, instead of concentrating in one spot. All right, now I've got to move. I'm boiling. Okay, apologies for the audio quality here. I'm just using my desktop microphone, but 
First off, it's important to note all the vaccines discussed here are effective at preventing the coronavirus from causing hospitalization and death. Obviously, that's why we take them. So it's just critical to remember that whatever side effects result from taking these vaccines, they're still much likely to be better than the unknown number and severity of side effects from COVID itself. That said, let's take a look at the numbers. Nearly 1,700 people took the poll. Of those, 60% are patients with MECFS or fibromyalgia. Surprisingly, 40% of respondents have neither condition. Those who reported neither condition suffer from conditions such as orthostatic intolerance, spinal issues, migraine, and IBS, amongst others. Now, four vaccines are detailed here. The two-dose Pfizer vaccine, two-dose Moderna, two-dose AstraZeneca, and the one-shot Johnson & Johnson. We'll look at how people self-reported their reactions using green, orange, and red to symbolize mild, moderate, and severe. We can check the number of respondents to ensure we're working with useful data. Lastly, we can see the time it took for people to recover from the shots using the similar traffic light system, less than a week, less than two weeks, over two weeks, under a month, or over a month. So the first Pfizer shot showed mostly mild reactions from the nearly 600 respondents and a pretty decent recovery time. The second Pfizer shot was not as gentle, showing mostly uh, moderate and severe reactions with longer recovery times stretching into the over a month category. And with every vaccine, we also tend to see a smaller number of responses as people await their second dose. The first Moderna jab had similar reactions as the first Pfizer shot, with over 450 respondents being mostly mild with a small subset of uh, moderate and severe. Recovery time here is also among the best of all the vaccines. Moderna's second shot, however, is a completely different story with only 11% showing mild symptoms and the largest proportion of all the vaccines for moderate or severe reactions. Recovery times are quite good, however, showing 85% are over their symptoms within two weeks. AstraZeneca, which is currently the only vaccine available in Australia, currently has 78% producing a moderate or severe reaction from its nearly 350 respondents. Recovery times show the most variance, with 30% taking over a week to recover, similar to the second Pfizer jab. Second dose of AstraZeneca has very few responses at 11, so while not statistically significant, it does indicate a pretty unfavorable recovery, both for symptoms and duration here. It's also worth noting that this vaccine is producing a minuscule chance of blood clots for those predisposed, and as such is no longer recommended for patients under 50 years old, which includes me, but Guess what, it's too late, I've already taken my first shot. I'm not worried as I don't have any predisposition to clots, but soon in Australia, they will be releasing more Pfizer vaccine. Lastly, the Johnson & Johnson one shot has the second lowest amount of responses behind the previous example, but early indications show the second worst side effects after Moderna shot two, but a very quick recovery time to compensate. So if all these colours and statistics are too much to take in, let me simplify it for you. This would be my ranking. If you can get the Johnson & Johnson, that is far and away the best. Despite the low number of poll responses, it's got to be the best based on the fact alone that it's just one shot and one recovery period. The next three vaccines are all a distance away, but considering the J&J &J vaccine is probably going to be the most difficult to get your hands on, the Pfizer vaccine is in second place given its side effects and recovery duration are the next best. Then the Moderna vaccine in number three, which appears to have a pretty brutal second dose side effects and recovery length. Last and lucky me, which is what I'm getting, is the AstraZeneca jab. And I still have the rough second dose recovery ahead of me in three months time. Thanks to Court Johnson for producing these figures and to all the people who provided their responses. I'll leave a link in the description of this video for anyone who wants to go to the blog, add their experience as I'll be doing myself. But right now, let's go back and see how I'm feeling.
All right, so it's been eight hours since I had my first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm straight up not having a great time. <laughs> so, uh, first off, the bandage, it does nothing. Uh, yeah, so I've got kind of a cluster of symptoms right now. As I said, not unexpected, four main, four main symptoms. Uh, I've got a real headache. It's kind of like a, a really dull sort of brain foggy headache. I've got a sore throat. I already had a sore throat. I've had it for a couple of months now. So it's just a little bit worse. Um, oh my God, I'm, my brain fogging so hard. I can't even remember my other symptoms. I got the headache. I got the sore throat. Oh, I got the lethargy. And I guess it was the brain fog. Oh, no, that's right. It's the sore arm. Uh, the rotating. I'm sure it was still better than not rotating it, but my right shoulder quite hurts. Quite hurts. You know what I'm saying. All right, I'll check back in with you tomorrow. Good morning. It is day two of my vaccine adventure. And first things first, it's been brought to my attention that patients with MACFS aren't in fact eligible for phase 1B of the rollout. Uh, so I apologize for making that mistake, but it was an honest mistake. All I did was go onto the Australian government's vaccine eligibility checker and tick the box that says, do you have an underlying condition? Because I do. And then it said, you are eligible to get one. So here's how to book. And I did. So apologies again, ScoMo, please don't throw me into vaccine jail. But the good news is my mistake will hopefully help some other MACFS patients know in advance uh, what they're likely to experience with the AstraZeneca vaccine. So moving along to that now, uh, all my symptoms are the same as last night, just worse. So I slept for nearly eight hours last night, but it was very light sleep because I was in a lot of pain. I could feel like the pain, it's difficult to explain, but I could feel it radiating into my dreams. Um, and, you know, it's waking up a lot. And then on top of that, just all the four symptoms I discussed Last night, my, my cat's coming by to say hi. Say hi to everyone, Mocha. <laughs> Good boy. So, yeah, I've still got this. It's a really dull but strong headache. My arm absolutely kills. Throat's still quite sore and the lethargy is just crushing. So uh, I've taken a couple of painkillers. Doesn't feel like they're doing much, but, you know, maybe they're working. And I'll check back in with you. This evening, me and Mocker will check back in with you then. Bye. And Wooshka, just like that, it is day two evening. So I'm pretty pleased to report that the symptoms have started to subside quite substantially. If it was at 100% this morning, then now it's sort of around 25%. So um, hoping this improvement continues and I'll just see how I feel tomorrow and I'll let you know. Buongiorno, day three. I slept quite a bit last night, slept a lot better than the night before. And symptom wise, I'm pretty much still the same as I was late yesterday. So even maybe a little worse, like 30% of the maximum symptoms that I was experiencing. So why don't we check in with my evening self and see how he's doing. Evening Angus, how are you? I'll be honest, not great, Morning Angus, but thanks for asking. You're welcome. I don't think he's listening. So my symptoms are all really quite the same. It's been another long day. All I've done is rest. And I'm a bit disappointed because I did expect to get better today, considering yesterday's morning, tonight, I was feeling better. But... I'll do what I'm so used to doing, as I'm sure all ME patients who are watching can understand, is walk back to the well of patients, draw another bucket, 
and let that sustain me for another day. Hopefully tomorrow is better for me. So why don't we check in with tomorrow, Angus? Good evening, it is tomorrow Angus here, or day four Angus, or whatever you'd like to call me. I'm pretty pleased to report that my patience paid off, uh, and gradually throughout today, the uh, symptoms have <laughs> begun to subside. Mocha's clearly glad about it as well. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd switch now to daily updates to see how I feel tomorrow. Um, I'd like to actually head up to Palm Beach, spend some time at my folks' place, and it is Easter today, so happy Easter as well. But for now, let's teleport ourselves to tomorrow at Palm Beach. Oh my God, it worked. I teleported. So today I'm feeling a little bit better. Again, not back to 100% still, maybe 10% of where I used to be. I've got uh, some <laughs> crazy noises in the background. I've got my niece <laughs> deliberately trying to distract behind. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty little girl. And my beautiful girlfriend filming for me. So, um, yeah, hopefully again, things just keep improving for me, but you know what? Let's check back in tomorrow night. Boom, Sunday night. Okay, so I think I'm now fully over the worst of the AstraZeneca vaccine. So that took in total uh, six days. And if I think back, it was definitely the first 48 hours that were the worst. The second 48 hours kind of dragged on. It didn't feel like much improvement, but then the fifth and the sixth day were really um, was where I felt like I was returning to peak energy. Not normal, like a normal person, but peak energy, like an ME CFS person would, uh, you know, find their full battery. So I'm going to enjoy the rest of my Easter weekend with my cute girlfriend, who is being a wonderful camera girl for me now. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see my experience with the second AstraZeneca jab, which happens exactly three months after the first jab, then let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you can like, and if you have a YouTube account, press subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. And I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.